It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding. Hi, this is Eric Keller for Entomology Animated. In this video, we're going to continue with the rainbow scarab beetle uh, modeling project. And I'm actually going to start painting some colors in the sky, so I'm very excited about that. We've got everything in substance, we've got a lot of the technical stuff out of the way. So now I can just enjoy some painting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all the parts except for the head and the antenna. So I'm going to start with the head and the antenna. It's kind of established the basic look for the beetle that I'm going to then use on other parts of the beetle. If you take a look at the reference footage here, you can see that uh, what we're dealing with here is a metallic surface on parts of the head and then a non-metallic uh, surface or a glossy surface on other parts of the head. So we have a little bit of a blend there from, let's see if we can find a decent picture of it, um, a blend from this metallic part to this non-metallic part. So that's gonna be kind of fun. Also, just looking at the head, ignoring the other parts, uh, for the most part, I'm seeing a lot of gold, some green, and bits of red kind of blended together. So it's a variety of colors. It's not just pure gold. It's gold and some other stuff here. And then of course we have a blend down here to non-metallic parts as well. So this is why I chose the uh, metallic roughness uh, template when I first set this up. Um, so what I'm gonna do is let's go over to the layers here and I like to just have a base layer at the bottom which has our basic material so what we can do is I'm going to go in here to the materials uh, section and I'm going to look at some of the more metallic materials so we have like brass pure gold pure aluminum uh, copper pure uh, definitely don't want to do human face uh, looks like gold pure would probably be the most logical one for the base if we look under smart materials we have some other metallic ones, but they also come with, uh, you know, sort of damage and other effects applied to them, hence the name Smart Materials. So I'm going to stick with just standard materials. I'm going to take Gold Pure and just drag it over to my layer palette. And now you can see that the whole thing turns gold. But it's a bit bright, so let's edit that uh, material a little bit. So I'm going to go over here to the layers. Go to properties. Let's bring this up a little bit. So you can see we have this is the fill right here um, of the gold color. Um, UV projection is fine. That's all fine. What I think we need to do is maybe lower this color into kind of more of an orange territory. Maybe something like that. All right. So what we have is, uh, in this particular layer, this gold pure material, we have color, we have roughness, and we have metallic, right? And the base color is our yellowish orange. The roughness here is a simple value. So if I move this up, you can see it gets more duller. If I move it down, it gets shinier. We want to probably have something not super shiny, maybe, well, fairly shiny, but not zero. We don't want that. We want something a little bit more like this and then the metallic I want this to be all the way at one. If I bring this down you see we get more of a glossy material. If I bring it up it's more metallic. Metallic materials tend to have their specular color is tinted by the base color of the surface. So you can see there's a little bit of gold going on here near the uh, edges of the specular highlights and the reflections. Does that make this even darker, maybe something like that, becomes a bit more obvious. So I think I like that a little bit better, but I want to go I'm being super picky here, but I can't really be helped. Let's see, I want to have something that's a bit orangier. Maybe so that looks, that's starting to look pretty good. Like my reference, again, this is just the base. We have that. Let's save. It's always good to save. 
Now I have a number of choices on how I want to do this blend into the non-metallic areas like the horn, this area, and this area down here. So one thing I can do, let's try this. I'm going to create a new layer beneath this gold pure layer. Let's just do this one. I'll select this. It doesn't matter. Let's find another uh, material, something that's a bit more like plastic. Uh, so we have plastic grainy. PVC stripes, so wood. We just need a starting place. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use that. Uh, let's do plastic grainy. Let's do plastic glossy. Actually, let's do this. So I'm going to drag this. I'm going to drag this below the gold pure layer. Let's hide the gold pure layer. So now we're getting something like this. Nice and bright blue. Not what we want. Let's set the blue base color to more of a dark brown, almost black. Something even like that. We can always change this stuff later. That's one of the things I love about working with Substance Painter. It's non-destructive. Let's see how shiny we want to get it. It should be just a little bit duller than the gold. We're going to reference Still shiny, but not quite as shiny as the gold. It's definitely grainy. So something like this works pretty well. And then metallic, I want to have this all the way at zero. If I put it at one, you can see we have metal. I'm going to put this all the way at zero. Now let's turn the gold, pure gold, back on. And uh, I'm going to add a layer mask. So I'll add a black mask. So that hides the entire gold layer. And now what I'm gonna do is just like if you're painting masks in Photoshop, I'm gonna paint white into this mask to reveal that gold color. So I'll take uh, my brush here and the standard brush is fine. Let's see, yeah, if I just start painting there, you can see it's revealing the gold. And this is a mask, so it's very easy to edit. And let's save some time and turn some symmetry on. What do you say? That sounds good. Let's just paint this real quick. Let's get the uh, brush size down a little bit. I'm just checking out my reference on my other screen. Just like in ZBrush, I'll do everything with symmetry on for a while and then I'll switch it off to make it look asymmetrical. Again, we can always come back and patch up the mask later, so I'm just going to get it, get the colors on here and start from there, and then we can worry about making this neater later on. That's probably good. Now, there is a little bit, it's green, it's a green metallic color, but there is a little bit here on the underside. So I'm going to paint that mask so that we have some of that revealed. Just a little bit. We're painting mask. We're since we're painting a mask. We're essentially painting black and white colors. So if I need to erase the mask, all I need to do is go down here, set this to black, and now I can erase it. So I've got the symmetry off, and I'm going to lower the size here just to get a little bit more detail in here, make it look nice and asymmetrical. And of course, we can also paint in between. So if I paint some gray, it's going to have. 
kind of a transition, but I think we can blend it a little bit better with a blur. So we're blurring the mask, not the paint. gray Paint like that. so now what I could do is I can use the smudge brush to kind of smooth out the transition here so again I'm actually painting the mask not the gold paint or the plastic color just the mask that uh, blends between the two layers so always keep that in mind and always be aware of what you have highlighted here if I have this highlighted then I'm painting on the layer if I have this highlighted then painting the mask. So I'm going to kind of just pull at this a little bit. Let's lower the stroke capacity and the flow. And maybe a little bit more. It's a little too strong. There we go. Sometimes I like to switch over to base color just so it's easier to see what's going on. Again, not to pontificate too much, but this is why I like trying to do a challenge like this. Because if I was a creature designer creating a creature for a movie, I might not think about the transition between the sort of metallic parts of the surface and the non-metallic parts. Uh, I think I mentioned in a previous video that you know the science behind why we have insects with metallic uh, surfaces to them has a lot to do with how the um, exoskeleton is produced for that particular insect. So exoskeletons, again, they're, they're a material that's called chitin, and they're excreted from cells that are meant to create the exoskeleton. So it's a, it's a cellular process, just like all the cells in your body. Um, but for some insects and arachnids that are shiny, uh, there's a particular way that these layers of chitin are kind of produced by these cells um, that refracts the light in such a way as to make it a metallic uh, look when light strikes the surface. So it's, it's this layering that creates this look and you know the science behind it is probably more complex than I'm giving credit for. Um, but I mentioned that um, the Cybugs YouTube channel has a great uh, video about this. So I'll link to that in this video. So if you want to watch it, learn more about it. This is a very cool process. So let's switch back to material and see how this looks. So we're getting kind of a nice sort of blend there. It might be a little bit too soft, but I can go back and forth until I get it the way I want, but it's definitely getting there. So we have a nice transition from metallic. That looks pretty good, you can tell right there. Metallic to non-metallic. And it's such a cool, organic kind of thing. And if I was designing an alien, I might think of the metallic surface, because there's plenty of metallic bugs out there. But um, really getting in there and trying to imitate this kind of transition, I think would be very helpful when designing uh, my own creatures later on. All right, I spent a few minutes kind of smudging the mask around. This mask right here to get kind of a smoother transition between the metallic and non-metallic parts. So that's looking pretty good. Again, if we sort of compare it here with our reference, do have, you know, there's, this, there's a transition there. And again, I can keep noodling on this, but I think that's good enough for now. You can sort of see how it transitions right there. Let's zoom in on that actually. You can see the transition. Probably go for a little bit higher up on mine. Uh, and I like it. I think it's okay. 
So the next thing I want to do is add a little bit more color variation to the gold part because right now it's just straight up gold and you can see from our reference that we actually have a lot of different colors in there. Reds and greens and so on. So it's not just strictly gold. Uh, so one thing I can do, let's save this first. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this layer. Let's select painting again and I'm gonna add uh, a paint layer. So a sub layer, whatever you call it, I forget what they call it here in uh, substance, but now I can paint on this and uh, I'm not gonna paint metal and I'm not gonna paint roughness, I just wanna paint color. So right now, if I take the brush and I hit it with the blue, that's not well, the color I want, but you can see it's the metallic part has stayed the same because of the mask and because I'm not painting metal, but the color is changing underneath. Let's undo those strokes, and let's find kind of like uh, something more related to our reference here. So maybe kind of a darker uh, reddish brown, something like that. And I'm gonna bring my brush size down and my stroke opacity way down. So we can just kind of dial this in on these parts here. this stroke capacity way down actually so I want it to be a bit more subtle again it's um, I'm gonna bring this a bit larger. and switch over to let's make this a bit larger chest just get rid of this all together I don't need it right now there we go um, we can of course switch to base color if we want to see how it looks That might be a little bit too low opacity. That's better. I'm not using any fancy brushes, just a regular paintbrush for the moment. I'm just trying to find that sweet spot so it's adding color, but doing it kind of smoothly. Here we go, let's start to look better. Switch back to material, and you can see we have that transition. settings and I'm going to rotate the environment and yeah I know I need to be better about learning hotkeys for everything but I use so many programs that I end up getting mixed up anyways so um, but one of these days I actually practice learning them for all the other programs Let's try adding just a little bit of green. Looking at kind of these areas around here and other parts, it's almost like it's reflecting green as well. It's a really kind of interesting property that this material has, but I think adding a touch of green here and there will help to simulate that. So let's see if I add it around here. It's just a matter of going in here and kind of playing with these colors for a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the metallic parts of the model for the head and the elytra and some of the other parts using these same techniques. And then in the next movie, we'll talk about the next steps in painting the model, creating more detail, damage, wear, and so on. So I've taken some time to finish out the other layers, just, just blocking out where I want to have the metallic parts and the basic colors. You can see there's a little bit here on the bottom, and I'm getting this from my reference. So if you take a look at my reference photos, you can see there's a little gold and green down here, as well as on the abdomen and parts of the leg. So that's what I've gone and done here. They're just kind of blocked in. I'm going to refine them, add some damage, and make them look a little bit more natural in the next movie. Uh, of course, I did have all these different texture sets that are all based on the UDIMs, and all of them have this plastic 
uh, layer, this, this one that I created in the first layer, they all share that between texture sets. So rather than create a new material and adjust the settings for each texture set, I just simply copied and pasted from one texture set to the other. And to do this, what you can do is you can right click over a layer, choose copy layer, and go to a different texture set, and then right click and paste that layer in there, that same layer. And I just did this for this plastic glossy layer for all of the texture sets, and I also did it for the gold pure uh, layer. If you copy this layer and paste it to a different texture set, then all you need to do is right click over this, choose clear mask, and then paint in a new mask. And uh, just like we we're doing before, you end up with a nice gold pattern uh, in various different parts of your model.